In a world where our cleaning routines have left the floors covered in filth, one little robot wants to change the world. But can she navigate unfamiliar territory and hold enough power to finish the job we couldn't? Watch as this lone droid cleans house. Then returns home so she can do it all over again. Zuzizi 70 is the cleaner. What's up everyone? My name is Jeff, and if this is your first time here at Slacker Labs, we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using smart home tech. Recently, Zuzi reached out to me about taking a look at their Z70 robot vacuum, and I almost turned it down because this vacuum doesn't have a direct integration with Home Assistant, which is currently my smart home platform of choice. But lately, I've been wondering if we could leverage the Amazon skills for these devices to bridge that gap and create an integration where there isn't one. So stick around if you're interested in learning more about the Z70 robot and whether I was able to integrate this with Home Assistant. But first, a massive thanks to Zuzi. They sent the Z70 robot at no cost so I could take a look and share my opinion with you. So let's do this thing. Okay, so this is my first robot vacuum and the Z70 is a two-in-one, meaning that it can both sweep and mop. So in an effort to prepare for this video, I watched a recently released training video on how to test robot vacuums. And after that, I decided I would just use this vacuum like normal people. And by normal people, I mean a family of three with a 65 pound train walker coonhound, a cat, and an almost non-existing vacuum in regimen. But before we get into how this thing cleans, let's talk hardware. The Zuzi Z70 is a two-in-one smart robot vacuum, and it can handle both hard and carpet floors with ease, thanks in part to these monster truck wheels. It's powered by a 5200 milliamp LG battery that can provide it 240 minutes of running time and a maximum suction power of 3500 pascals. It comes with a dustbin and a two-in-one water reservoir, allowing you to choose whether it's a vacuuming day or a mopping day. The removable mop plate comes with two reusable microfiber mop heads and it's easy to attach. This vacuum uses LiDAR and 20 built-in sensors to enable it to map your house, avoid obstacles, and adapt its performance based on the surface of the floor. And with the MediaTek A35 chip at its core, it'll learn how to become a more efficient cleaner as it dances through your house collecting the filth from your floor. This smart vacuum can leverage either a 5 GHz or a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network meaning getting it to talk to your existing network shouldn't be a challenge. In fact, getting this vacuum to speak your language shouldn't be a challenge either, as the Z70 can converse with you in five different languages. With the companion app, you can change the cleaning mode between quiet and maximum power, as well as define virtual walls, no-go zones, and a cleaning schedule. And you can connect it to both Google and Amazon. So after getting it unboxed and set up, we put it on its charger to top off the battery and once it had a full charge, we sent it out on its first run. I've only had this vacuum for a couple of weeks, so I'm definitely still in the honeymoon phase. But so far, this vacuum has performed better than I expected. Prior to the Z70's arrival, cleaning the floors was primarily left up to a Dyson Animal Upright, which cost around $600 when we bought it, and a Shark Duo Cordless Stick Vacuum for quicker tasks that probably cost half that. And honestly, I didn't think this small little robot was going to outperform the Upright Dyson. But it didn't take long for me to realize that was a bad assumption. This little robot vacuum is pretty incredible. Again, this is my first robot vacuum, so take that as an opinion from someone who has zero experience with cleaning droids. But this thing has been sweeping all of the common areas of the house each day since we've got it set up. And the amount of stuff this pulls off the floor each time is amazing. Well, it's 97% amazing and 3% disgusting. Or is it... 3% amazing and 97% disgusting. Either way, it easily matches the performance of the Dyson on the carpet, and it totally outperforms both the Dyson and the Shark on the hardwood floors. And this whole time, it's been on normal mode. 
I haven't seen a need to turn it up to 11. That's a Spinal Tap joke for those that might have missed it. And by it, I mean both the joke and Spinal Tap. Anyway, all of this makes me wonder just what the heck the Dyson's been doing as I've been pushing it around the living room. I mean, other than obviously not vacuuming. But perhaps a better testament is that my wife says the floors feel much better under her bare feet after the Z70 runs compared to when the Dyson runs. So put that in the wind column. For the first run, we just let it go and map all of the common areas on the first floor, and it took a little over an hour. The turret on top for the LiDAR is going to prevent it from getting under some objects, like our couches, but it can easily fit under the bookshelves in the living room, which until now have been previously ignored. Once it had returned home, I opened up the app and pulled up the Smart Partition section so that I could start dividing up the house into areas. The app had done a pretty good job of detecting the areas, so I just did some minor tweaks and added some virtual walls to keep this vacuum out of the bedrooms for now. And since this vacuum is a 2-in-1, I went into each of the partitions and marked whether or not it was a mopping zone. How to do this wasn't extremely clear in either the app or the manual that came with the vacuum. But after clicking on some random options in the app, I found that when you're in the Smart Partition section, you just have to click on this red icon, and then click on the green dots for the partition you want to edit. Here you can adjust the name, the spin intensity of the brushes, and then select how much water you want to use in that area. So for the carpet areas, I picked no water, because who wants wet carpet? After you have your partition set up, then you can jump into the scheduling action to schedule your droids routine. Here you just choose a time, a duration, I left this as unlimited for all of them, a repeat pattern, or pick a date if you want it to run on an as-needed basis. Then you pick which regions you want to clean during this task, which I haven't set up yet. So I use the partitions. Just flip the toggle, then select which partitions you want, and you're all set. This vacuum also claims to integrate with Google and Amazon. But before you attempt that, you will probably want to set up a Zuzi account for your house and then share your vacuum with it. That way, every time your smart assistant interacts with your vacuum, it doesn't log you out of the Zuzi app, which may not be a big deal for you, but I really hate having to log in each time I open the app. Adding this vacuum to your Amazon Echo is pretty easy. You just open the Amazon app, find the Zuzi skills under skills, and then supply your credentials. After that, the Echo will discover your device and your vacuum will be added. Although it appears that the Amazon skill just has an on and off. And every time I've tried to turn the vacuum on, it tells me that the device is unresponsive. But if the Z70 starts a cleaning task and I pull up the Amazon app, it tells me that the device is on. So it appears at some level the skill does talk to the vacuum, but I'm not real sure what the purpose is if I can't turn on the vacuum when it's off. The Google sets up exactly the same way. You open your Google Home app, you find the Zuzi skill, and you supply your credentials. This integration appears to have a little bit more detail. For example, once the vacuum had been added to the Google Home, it told me that RZS1 was docked. RZS1 is our Z70's droid name. But once RZS1 was moving on a scheduled task, I opened up the Google Home app and it told me that RZS1 was stopped, which was clearly not the case. So while the Zuzi skill exists on both of these platforms, there does appear to be some bugs, which I'm hoping is just temporary because I really do like this vacuum. But that does mean that integrating this into Home Assistant isn't currently possible. Like I said, I knew going into this that this vacuum didn't have a direct integration with Home Assistant, but I was hoping to be able to leverage the Amazon skill to make that happen. Plus, it would have been a good way to show that you don't always need a direct integration to get this smart home tech integrated with Home Assistant. I'm hoping that in the future, I'll be able to set up a routine on my Amazon Echo to start the vacuum, then just set up Home Assistant to kick off that routine every time we leave. For now, RZS1 will just have to be an independent contractor in my smart home. Overall, the Zuzi Z70 appears to be well made, and it's a fantastic robot vacuum. And I found the Zuzi app to be fairly easy to use. But the current issues with the Amazon skill and the Google skill make this a less compelling robot vacuum option than some of the others out there. That said, if you're looking for a little droid to take over your vacuuming and you don't care about the smart home integration, then I would put this vacuum on your shortlist. If connecting your cleaning droid to your smart home is important, then you probably want to wait on purchasing this robot vacuum. As of filming, it's currently $4.99 on Amazon with a $200 coupon, making it $2.99. And I've seen it as low as $3.39 with a coupon. Just check Amazon for the most current pricing. There's an affiliate link in the description, which adds no cost to you, but helps out the channel. So if you're interested in purchasing this droid, click that link. 
The Z70 vacuums pretty well, and it's definitely less work than that upright. And living that Slacker Labs lifestyle is all about doing less so that we could do more. Which reminds me, I need to talk to the wife about buying a robot lawnmower. Anyway, another huge thank you to Zuzi for sending the Z70. If you like this video, click that like button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff. Thank you.